Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of Grace Ace Attorney Chronicles. Last episode, it's been a while since I recorded Grace Ace Attorney Chronicles because, like, I've been busy with other games that I have been recording, and you know, we're gonna be continuing with the investigation because we met a guy, he ran away, we did a deduction, of course, and they took our disc. That's hopefully I can remember, so let's start playing from the... Let's keep going. Fifteenth of April, Baker Street. See, that's why I hate going on ups. I think I re remember giving her the British voice. Hold up. I'm hoping my mic doesn't fail me. <laughs> okay, it's a little better. All they do is feed you a pack of lies, and they take stuff away from ya. Oh really, Miss Lestrade? Tell me, is that overcoat keeping you warm? What? Oh my, surely you were given that. Yeah, the D let me keep it after I let look daggers at him for too long for long enough. He went through the pockets and then said, "Go on, then have it." Before telling me the scapa. I always pay off giving people a, a look like you ate him. Can't help feeling that it's going to get you into serious trouble one day. I can't believe she kept the jacket. What that I really wanted was that nice shiny disc mi disc mind. The music box disc. But Mr. Windbank said it was practically worthless. I think I'm going to have another at bash. Give it a long odd stare. Dig not Mrs. Stray. We shan't enter Windbanks again today. Why not? It's not fair. Can't be helped, I'm afraid. The police are investigating the scene now and taking a statement from Mr. Windebank. But that disc mine, I had that ticket for this coat and it was in the coat's pocket. And there should be something else and all. That's what the Rotten Cove said, ain't it? Yes, he did mention something about another article. Didn't he? Well then, that's mine too, whatever it is. Now she's really pushing her luck. Miss Lestrade, I think it's time to admit defeat. You've had your haul for the day. Yeah, and it's all your fault, Jones. So what are your plans now? <laughs> Will you dine with us with this evening? Eh? I always would be delighted to cook, I'm sure. I might entertain you with a modest violin recital. Nota. Oh. Well, what I come around your place, eh? Have you lost your head or something? Well, she ran away. Oh dear, she's gone. Hmm, having reviled on me quite unnecessarily, I might add. Uh, I, I can't help wondering. If perhaps she might turn up anyway. Interesting. Well, she's had a chance to calm down. I think there's a good chance she'll decide to come. Very well, then. I'll inform Iris to set up a place for our potential guests at the dining table this evening. And one more thing. What is it? I'll be glad to come to you later, too. Sorry? I believe I'll have a rather splendid surprise to show you. Oh, how exciting. What is it? You shall have to wait and see, Mr. Sato. Until then, later. Alright. Probably we'll go back to... Shom Sweet, I guess. Fifteen of April, three forty-six p.m. Show them sweet, okay. Oh, Susie and Luno, come in, come in. Uh, good afternoon, Iris. Thank you so much for breakfast this morning. Oh, don't mention it. Goodness, look at the time already. Busy as always. I am uh, preparing everything for dinner this evening. Uh, uh, already. You're obviously cooking something special, are you? Damn, she's doing a lot of work around. Oh yes, after all, we have a special guest joining us. 
And guess who it is? Go on, hee <laughs> hee, you'll never guess. Uh, look at those little eyes of her shining. Oh dear, it is awkward when you already know the answer, isn't it? It's Denny, isn't that exciting? Oh, uh, oh, oh, what a surprise! Ye yes, that's wonderful news! Wow, Ira seems overjoyed at the idea. Can't wait to learn some pickpocketing tips from a real professional. Oh yes, that does sound like fun. I'm not sure that's entirely appropriate. Are you Mr. Naruhodo? Uh, by the way, Iris! <laughs> What's Mr. Shom's up to? Hurley? Oh, he's been like that ever since he got back. Hello, Mr. Sholmes. I beg that you won't speak to me. S sorry I don't know who you are, but kindly take your leave. As you can see, I'm not here. Okay. <laughs> I guess I'll... I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> yes, let's just pretend he's not here. I do apologize when he gets like this. He's completely oblivious to everything. Yes, I... see. <laughs> okay. Really? He just behaves like a child sometimes. Hurley does. Mr. Soames and Miss and Iris have something of a parent-child relationship, don't they? Yes, except that Iris is clearly the parent here, I agree. Come to think of it, I wonder where her real parents are. What's the matter, Luno? Have you ever find such a funny look on your face? Uh, no, it's nothing. I know what it is. Why does this girl live here with Mr. Sholmes, you're wondering? Am I right? How? How did you- How did you mind read me? Hehe, <laughs> oh, do no. I can read you like a book. Uh, this girl is very dangerous. Don't worry, you can ask me anything. I won't mind. Okay. Ginny. So, by Ginny, you mean Miss Lestrade, the young woman from the McGilded case two year months ago, right? Yes, who stole my experimental gren grenade launcher. Although, after that trial, I invited her back here, so, so we had dinner together. And now we're the best of friends. Oh, hee hee, what a lovely tale. Yes, now if I bump into her on the street, she runs away as fast as she can. Uh oh. And I chase her after down back the d back alleys. Interesting idea of friendship. And then when I let her have the latest color of smoke on it, I develop. Oh. There's so many beautiful colors in the world. Ginny wants me to make a wonderful rain whole rainbow. I suppose this means you've let Miss Stray keep the smoke grenade launcher, have you? Yes, that's all right. I got bored of it anyway. Hurley always reacts the same way when I shoot him with it now. Poor Hurley. Oh, I can't wait for Ginny to arrive. It's been too long since she last came over. I'm so excited. I just hope she actually does come. Living with Sholmes. I'm sure you've been wondering why is it that I live here with Hurley, haven't you? Well, it has crossed my mind, and that. And where are your real parents? My mommy and daddy aren't with me anymore, Pepe Hens. Okay. Mommy passed away when I was born, and around the same time, my father. Well, he had to go to a faraway land because of one of the cases he and Hurley were working on. Oh, wait a minute, didn't you say he and Hurley? Yes, Daddy and Hurley were always solving mystery years cases together. She didn't mention that before. He wrote them all in his diaries. That's what the metal chest over there. It, really, he recorded them all in that big case. So, you mean it's true Mr. Sholmes really did have a partner who he tackled some of his most taxing cases? 
Oh, yes, I mean, it's always nice to have one, isn't it? So, Mr. Sholm's partner was your father? Exactly. Hurley told me I wasn't allowed to look in the chest. And that only made me want to look even more, so I opened it up. So you found your father's memoirs. Yes, so I asked Hurley. Who wrote these? He nearly fell out of his chair. I could see why. But then he told me that's when I found out that the author of those accounts was my father. So Iris's father was Mr. Sholm's partner. Iris's father. I practically lived with Hurley all my life. I was tiny when he took me in. So, it came as quite a, a shock. Shock. When Hurley told me he wasn't really my daddy. I mean, I must have done. I wonder why Mr. Sholmes chose to tell you, and at such a young age. Hurley says it's because he wouldn't be able to hide it from me. Oh? Oh? Well, having lived with Harley all these years, you might say that his ways are rubbed off on me. And some of the things I can just see. Especially lies. I almost know when people are lying before they open their mouths sometimes. Right. Anyway, I was so fascinating when I read Addy's diaries. I'm pretty curious about this, about your actual, your actual father. That's what inspired me to write the adventures of the Herlock Sholmes, actually. I'd always assumed Mr. Sholmes simply told you all those thrilling stories. Oh no, Hurley's hopeless like that. He forgets everything as soon as he solved the case and it all vanishes from his mind. That sounds like a familiar scene. <laughs> that sounds very familiar. Hmm, how many cases? Hmm. Oh, I see. The other day was so embarrassing. As usual, he told... He totally forgot about the case he just solved. So the very next day, he gathered together all the people involved and proceeded to solve the case again. It's quite a shock for everyone. You'd say that again. You share your father's surname, don't you, Iris? That's right, Wilson. Daddy is Dr. John H. Wilson. I learned from his diaries that he's a doctor of medicine, you see. And that's what prompted me to study and study so that I can earn a doctorate as well. Iris' father, who went to some distant land, and is a doctor by the name of John H. Wilson. The court were now here. The trial were Yonosuke Naruhodo. Kindly say before the court the name of the victim in this case. Victim's name was Dr. John H. Wilson. Huh? That's right. Visiting professor of medicine of Imperial Yume University. And the man who in the most bizarre circumstances lost his life just before we left Japan. Wait, case one? Mrs. Sato, we should tell her. Yes. Perhaps we shouldn't pursue this conversation any further at this- Wait, we can't tell her? I think that would be for the best. Ah, oh, my dear fellows! How good to see you! <laughs> Mr. Sholmes! Why ever did you not make your presence known to me before? Ha! Huh. Well, no matter now. So, how the devil are you? We've been with you for the most of the day. Oh, goodness, really? Do tell me, Mr. Sholmes, is your violin unscathed? Hmm, my violin? Whatever are you talking about, dear, dear man? Uh, oh, um... Never mind that, now I have something far more interesting to show you. Behold, my dear fellows! Oh, another music box disc. No, no, not another disc, Mr. Sato. This is the one Gregson demanded we hand over as evidence, Mr. McGilded's- Wait, what? Why do you have it? Oh my. What's it doing here? <laughs> you know, at times, Mr. Naruhodo, I think that though I have an undeniable turn for detection, 
I may well be more adept at larceny. Oh, that would be wonderfully exciting. I'd be pickpocketing your sis your pickpocketing sis. And Uno could be your go-to lawyer if we ever get caught. Right. I'm gonna have to defend you guys if <laughs> Okay. Plus Susie has such beautiful handwriting she could write all of our menacing crime notifications. <laughs> yes, I'd be delighted. I'm just going to pretend this conversation never happened, I think. Well, we got ourselves a huge problem. Why the hell do you have the disc anyway? Oh no. I... I don't understand. How did that disc come to be in your possession? I thought Inspector Gregson took it back to Scotland Yard. Quite correct. And that sort of uncompromising attitude is precisely why I carry some of these. That's a bar of caramel, Mr. Sholmes. Your one and only friend in times of loneliness, I'm not mistaken. You'll humor me, my dear fellows. Cast your minds back to when the good detector confiscated the disc. I'll be checking out whatever it is, Mc Mr. McGill, it's down to the yard. Thank you very much. So hand it over. Uh, yes, of course. Police demand something as evidence, my dear fellow. We have no choice but to capitulate. It's all yours, Inspect. Oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> Okay. What a brief as a moment I had the disc in my hand, did I not? Yes, yes you did, but I still don't understand. It was precisely at that moment I summoned my one and only friend into action. I pressed the disc into a pair of bars, like this. Ah, how? How? How did... Uh, did, did, did uh, that, 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 that's amazing! The disc and all minuscule protrusion made an image of the caramel. Indeed, this caramel is quite exceptional. I developed it myself, you know. It's all before making impressions were resistant to melting. There is not a precisely controlled solution. How extraordinary! Wow. Carrying a pair of these on one person frequently proves very useful indeed. Take a house key for example, a simple press in its unique form is duplicated. Can only enter properties will, and never without high circles nourishment. Yes, it sounds illegal. We're gonna get in so much trouble. <laughs> We're gonna get in so much trouble. From the image I was able to create this. I confess I was most curious to know what matter music would issue from the disc when played. Music on the disc. Do you tell us then, Mr. Sholmes, what does music play on this display? Well, unfortunately, I have no idea. No idea. None whatsoever. Are you familiar with the workings of a music box, my dear fellows? No, I'm afraid not. Goodness, you don't know, Nuno? Hmm. Inside a music box, there's a special metal piece called a comb. That's what produces the sound. Small protuberances pluck the different teeth of the comb as they rotate past it, making the different notes. The first music boxes to be invented use a rotating cylinder with protuberances on it. But over time, the new type of player was produced, which uses discs such as these. With that development, the popularity of music boxes spread far and wide all around the globe. Why exactly? Because the discs are easy to produce and can be interchanged to facilitate the playing of different tunes. There are a great many firms in Europe now manufacturing music boxes as a result. I have a feeling this is going to be very important. It is wonderful to enjoy music when even when no performers present. But it's the very success of the invention that means we have are now presented with an insurmountable problem. What do you mean? As you may imagine, the construction of one firm's music box does not match that of another. And we have no way of knowing in which music box this particular disc is designed to be played. So we just gotta find this music box, right? There is no resolution to this problem, I'm afraid. It's quite intractable. Ah, I see. So that's why. 
Naturally, I tasted this disc on a few music boxes I have at my disposal. It didn't work. But as you can hear, and as to no avail. The results are equally unsatisfactory in this one. Uh, so, I am presently engaged in acquiring an example of all music boxes ever made in Europe. Uh, uh, every single one? That's Hurley for you, always taking things too far. But my dear girl, an on so brittle is quite repugnant to my constitution. But surely all the different types of year types in Europe will amount to a huge volume of music boxes, won't it? Hmm, yes, that is certainly true in the worst case. I shall have to ask you to vacate the attic room. What? what But my attic! Oop, my bad. Oh no, I pressed it by accident. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry! Press enter. How do we skip? How do we skip faster? I pressed it by accident. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, well, don't worry. We'll get back to it. I won't be able to cut. I'm not going to cut that part or else it's going to be like too complicated. Okay. Yep. Hurry. I can't skip, please. I just want to skip. Okay, much better. Sorry, guys. I pressed it by accident. Okay, Magnus McGilded. What's he have to do with this? Magnus McGilded. Magnus McGilded, not a name I expected to hear again so soon. Yes, it's only been two months since that grisly case. Where his carriage is on fire. Mr. McGilded perished within hours of the trial's conclusion. Some say it was the Reaper who did it. Was it the curse of the Reaper? No one knows. Still now. The omnibus was reduced to a pile of ash. Not a shred of evidence remained. And with the man's death, the truth about the murder in which he was so intimately involved was buried. Even though we successfully established Mr. McGilty's innocence in the trial, new we were still claiming that it remains an unsolved case. Honestly, I wanted to pursue the truth. Murder of the brickmaker, Mr. Thrice Fired Mason. These are all coincident. In the end, the truth of the matter remains a mystery. We still have no idea what really happened that night. Although Mr. McGilda was not found not guilty through my defense, I still don't know if that was the right judgment or not. We wanted to pursue the case further, but the game wouldn't let us. It would appear that the case is not yet closed. Well, it's time I started getting things ready for dinner, I think. Tinny will be here for for long. Thank you, Iris. Oh, well you must let me help you then. Of course, Susie. There's plenty to do. I think I shall investigate the condition of my faithful performing partner. Now then, where did I leave it? Let this be a lesson to you, Mr. Sholmes. Never leave anything to poo precious with the pawnbroker. Hmm, yes, you may be right. Oh, that reminds me of something Mr. Winmebag sent before. He said he had a manuscript of irises in pawn, didn't he? Did he? Yes, definitely. Mention it. Mr. Sholmes' latest tale of underworldly mystery lies dormant in my storeroom, were his words, I believe. So you heard about that, did you? I suspect you were as incensed as I was. Oh yes, the idea of such a wonderful story languishing in Mr. Windbank's storeroom gathering dust. My dear madam, I'm quite sure I told you already. 
The pawnbroker's storeroom is the safest place for it. More secure than the bank's vault. And what about your Stradivarius, Hurley? Was that safe and secure? Well, there may be the occasional mix-up. Caused by a certain pantry is someone not far too far from me now. You have any idea how long it took me to write that basketball story, Hurley? No, it sounds so exciting to hound of the Baskervilles. I should love to read it. Uh. Uh. What's wrong? Uh. Uh. What's going on here? Why does it feel like an icy chill just swept through the room? What? What just happened? Uh, Susie, what did you just say? Uh, um, you said the Hound of the Baskervilles. But how can you know the full title? Well, that's that's because Mrs. Sada is a great fan of all the stories about Mr. Sholmes, of course. But oh no, the Hound of the Baskervilles has never been published. What? Uh, when I showed Hurley the manuscript, he told me that I wasn't allowed to publish it yet. I, I don't understand. That's why he said he'd keep it safe. Until it's the right time for the story to be made public, you see. So that's why the manuscript is at Windabanks? And yet, how could Susie here know its title? Well, Hurley, what's going on? What did you do, Sholmes? Ah. What is it, Mr. Sholmes? It would appear our guest has arrived. Mr. Strayed. This was a bad idea. I knew I, w I weren't welcome. I'm going. What? Oh, she. No, no, wait, Mr. Strayed. Don't leave. You've already been awaiting your arrival. Haven't we, Iris? Oh yes, just wait there, Ginny. We have everything in ready in a jiffy. Come along, Susie. <laughs> right, of course. It's a pleasure to see you here, Mr. Strade. Please, make yourself at home. Don't just stand in the doorway, my dear girl. Come along in. But say you some mendo soon, I won't take no for an answer. Metal sum it is then. Hello. Oh, kitty! Why got high? Meow. That evening, Iris prepared us all a meal that was more delicious than usual. Mr. Sholmes' violin and performance was in no way meddlesome. And Gina, as we came to call her, taught us how to steal things from one another without being noticed. They went thoroughly enjoyed themselves well into the night. Nine forty thirty four PM Mauro Hotel's legal consult consultancy. That was a very enjoyable evening, wasn't it? Oh yes, Iris cooking was truly divine. As I feel as though I could hear the enchanting strains of Mr. Sholmes' violin even now. Best of all, I can bet I could steal the glasses from his lordship's face next time we're in court. Naruhodo son, how could I cons could I consult you about something I wonder? What's the matter, Sasada son? It's about the telegram I received. Ah, the one that arrived first thing this morning, I suppose. I've been s I've been summoned. What summon? What do you mean? Telegram was from the Lord Chief Justice Office. Lord Strongheart has asked to see me. Lord Chief Justice, when? Tomorrow morning. What? Then we have to start preparing at once. Oh no, that won't be necessary, Naruhodo son. I've been summoned alone. Uh oh. Alone? What on earth for? I have no idea. I shall find out tomorrow. 
what's all this about? Whatever it is, it's making me feel very uneasy. Oh, who could that be, I wonder? Oh, good evening, friends! Uh, Iris, well, hello again. And Gina, too. Yes, Ginny's going to stay with us tonight. She's going to sleep in with me. Isn't that right, Ginny? Well, yeah. How lovely. Let me make a pot of tea. You know, I've learned so much today. Oh, what in particular? All those things Ginny showed us. Wasn't it wonderful? Uh, you mean all those pickpocketing techniques? We had fun trying them out on each other, didn't we? I think I've awakened a natural talent. I could earn a living from it. You might be getting ahead of yourself a little, dear. <laughs> at that young age, too. So, what brings you up to our humble quarters at this late hour? Well, you see. I came to return this. Wait, what? That, 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 that's mine? Where did you get that? You sold for me. Oh my, how did ever did you? I told you, didn't I? I have a natural town for it. Oh yes, I've forgotten. Iris is literally a child genius. So anyway, here. You can have it back. Not that I really understand why you wear it, though. Ah, uh, thank you. Alright then, good night. Yes, good night. Hmm, so this is your office, is it? What do you think, Ginny? I think I wouldn't fasten my chances with a with lawyer what lives in a place like this. Yes, me too. <laughs> it seems as though Iris here still has something she'd like to talk about. Yeah, the Hound of the Baskervilles, I think. I suppose she probably wants to talk about the manuscript. Yes, I suppose she probably does. Iris, I... I suppose you're hoping to talk about the manuscript, aren't you? Aren't you going to tell me? I'm so sorry. I need a little more time, please. Alright, I understand. Hope I haven't made you feel awkward. Uh, oh no, not at all, Iris. Not at all. I don't know what a, uh, this is about really, but... It's a story you made up, to, up is it, Iris? The mantle skip, or whatever you called it. It's not exactly a story that I made up. It's something I've read in Daddy's Diaries. Uh, Daddy's? That's right. I don't suppose I've mentioned it to you before, Ginny, but my daddy was Hurley's assistant once, his partner. Eh? They solve all sorts of strange and mysterious cases together. Is that right, mister? Apparently so. It's just surprises surprise as you are, though. And daddy all wrote details of every single case down you see in his diaries. So I studied them and write my stories based on what actually happened. So, where's your old man now then? I'm tr- I keep switching Gina's voice. I'm trying to remember what voice I gave her. But I'm pretty sure it's the same thing as Iris maybe, I don't know. You have to go away in an urgent business to a faraway land, he'll be gone for a very long time. So I've never really met him. Oh, right. Come to think of it. I don't know anything about Gina's parents either. Perhaps we should ask her? Hound of the Baskervilles. Iris, this Hound of the Baskervilles story. I take it that's another tale inspired by your father's accounts? That's right. I thought it was fascinating. But it's different somehow. From the other cases, I mean. Oh, how? I don't really know. It must be special in some way. Because after I've written it, I showed the manuscript to Hurley. 
He turned as white as a sheet. It was the first time I've seen ever seen him like that. He needs me to go have to say this after you told over it for so long, Iris. But this story must be not be published at this time, under any circumstances. But why not? It's one of my best works. I'm not at liberty to say, but not now. So please do not ask me. Alright then, I won't. I do solemnly swear that I'll explain everything one day, Iris. Time is right. That's how the manuscript came to be with Mr. Winnebank, isn't it? Yes. Really said it had to be somewhere very safe. That really gets my goat, that does it? He's treating you like a child? I mean, it's what it is, keeping secrets like that. I'm sure Mr. Sholmes isn't trying to be mean. Eh? He said he wasn't at liberty to talk about it. I'm sure there must be a very good reason. I think so, too. You got all the testing for your own good? We can't pull the wool over my eyes. Sholmes is lying to Iris. I bet my life on it. What? Hurley's lying to me? Maybe we should... Talk to Gina? Where's Gina? Well, what are you doing? Look, I'm not gonna steal nothing, alright? It's junk anyway. Sure, I mean, I suppose I should engage our guests in conversation, really. Talk to Gina. Your parents. I realize that I don't know anything about your parents, Gina. I ain't got any, have I? Never did have. Oh. Look, these sense full of orphans like me. No one wants nothing to do with us. The minute we're born now, uh, even our mums. We all stick together. The older ones look after the little ones and make sure they get by. So that's why you're a pickpocket. Nah, diamond's my life. I'd love it. I get a kick out of it every time I lift some papa's idiot's pus. And that's all we have to afford to eat. I'm like wobbing all odd, ain't I? That's how I see it. Oh, Gina. I do think about it sometimes. What it'd be like to have parents, I mean. I always thought I'd make, every make everything right. But I've been listening to the, what Iris just said. It sounds like I've been parents ain't ease, always easy either. Oh. I mean, if you know what you are never had him, you don't feel like you always wanted to meet him. It's true. I do want to see daddy so much. Oh, Iris. Sholmes, lie. What is this lie? Gina, what do you mean when you said you know Mr. Sholmes is lying to Iris? Oh, well, reckons he popped a mat skip or whatever, right? But come on, that's obviously a load of rubbish. Oh my, why do you think that, Gina? Simple if that story was really an old Windebank storeroom. There's no way for someone from halfway around the world, in other words, you, could know about it. Ah. Uh. Sorry, Iris, if you ask me, he sold it. But I'm telling you. But. I heard he would never do something like that, I'm sure of it. Huh. Grown ups do a lot worse than that, believe me, Barefoot Lars, a lot of him. He ain't realized it yet. Is Shom's lying? I'm telling you, that mantle skip ain't at, the, ain't at Windbex, you'll see sooner if you had a look. Even if you think you could trust him, I don't. That Shom's is a liar like the rest of him. If I'm honest, I've wondered if Hurley's telling me the truth sometimes. See? Oh, but I don't mean that I, I don't think he sold it. 
me and I sometimes wonder if we might have hidden my manuscript somewhere. Somewhere I don't know. Even if it though it wrong me to doubt him. Don't be too hard on yourself, Iris. Well, I think that's enough. Oh my goodness, look at the time. Come along, Ginny. We should go back downstairs. Yeah, alright. And please don't mention this anything to Hurley, will you? No, of course not. Good night then, Iris. Good night then, Gina. You must let me make breakfast for you tomorrow morning. I insist. Oh, yes, please. I can wait, Susie. Good night then. Well, Iris, it sure is easy to forget, isn't it? Sometimes she just speaks just like an adult. But deep down, she's still just a child. Well, I think it's time that I turn in for the night too, Maruhoto son. Dr. John H. Wilson, Iris' father. But also, the name of the murdered visiting professor at Ime University. That she got literally, he literally got poisoned. Literally poisoned. Because he had a doctor's appointment. Can't be a mere coincidence. There's something deeper going on. So I guess we're gonna sit when we get to the save point. Oh no, it's an Aruhodo. That voice, that's Mr. Sholmes. What's going on? It's the middle of the night. Mrs. Strange, she's gone. G Gina. She was supposed to be sleeping in Iris' room, but her bed is empty. Well, she's an independent young woman. She probably decided to go home, no? I think not. From speaking to her before she retired, I received a distinct impression that she was looking forward to breakfasting with Mrs. Sato. No, I don't believe the girl's gone home. I've been waiting for over an hour now. Over an hour? Oh. If you indulge me, look out the window. My dear fellow, what's this about? Wait a minute, why is there a light on this time? Oh no! Oh no! And Windebanks Miss Pondery? Pondrokery? It's the Windebanks. Oh no! No way! Gina? Gina, what are you doing? Simple if that store was really an old Windebank storeroom. There's no way for someone all from halfway ar around the world, in other words, you could know about it. Sorry, Iris, if you ask me, he sold it without telling you. Could Gina have gone? Seems you have knowledge about the situation, Mr. Naruhoto. Sorry? Uh, oh no. no. Not, not really. Oh shit, that's not good. Fuck! Something's gonna happen! I don't know what's gonna happen, but... Any... Well, anyways, we must investigate. I don't know what's gonna happen! At once! This is Sato. Go, 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 go! Go, 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 go! Door to win the banks. It's open! And the lamp is burning. It must be Gina must in it. Let us hope it's not nothing more than sinister. What? Come, there's not a moment to lose. Something's clearly afoot inside. Fuck. What's going on? There's no one here. Oh, yes. There is. Oh, what the fuck? Mr. Sholmes! Mr. Sholmes! What the? Has Sholmes been shot? Leave me, Mr. Naruhodo! But... After them, go! Right. Blast! I've lost them! Hello, hello, what have you here? Bobby was alarmed just from Pawnbroker, sir. Would you know something about that? 
Officer, come with me. My friend, Mr. Sholmes, he's been shot. Shot! Please spin close behind me. I ran back to Windbanks. Hmm. Mr. Sholmes, he's not dead, isn't he? Stay alive, Sholmes. Don't move! Huh? Someone there? Wait, someone else there? Hmm, it's locked. Oh no! The owner! Wait, is that Gina? Wait, did I saw a gun? Oh fuck! Holy shit. Wherever those silhouettes are. They must have shot... They must have shot... Oh my god. Oh my god. What happened in there? So, I guess we're gonna end this part now. So I guess next time on Grace Ace Attorney Chronicles. We're gonna continue investigation part 3. Find out what happened to G Gina, the, the window bank owner, who those silhouettes are, I think. And uh, hopefully Sholmes is alright, despite him getting shot. So I guess I guess see you guys all next time.